Here is something that you definitely can't tell by just looking at me for instance. My room is a complete mess. I can barely set my foot in it. There's textbooks and comic books all over the floor. And my pile of clothes covered the entire surface of my mini sofa. I have to say my textbooks give the most damages of all. They dominate my desk, floor, and shelves. It's so bad, I can't even sleep in my own room. Then you might ask, well, then where do you sleep? And then I'll answer it like this. Well, I put my bed right in the middle of my living room and I sleep with my dog. <laughs> it's kind of surprising, isn't it? Usually people like me are so neat and sophisticated and tidy. I'm lazy, untidy, and naive. But my room wasn't always like this. And in fact, there were some times when it was so clean and tidy. The thing is, I was a person of economic materialism. I bought things as I desired that were recognized as trendy. So if everyone at preschool had that same cute looking doll, then I'd buy it. If there was this video game everyone in class played, I'd buy it, even if I didn't want to, just to fit in. I also had some opportunities to go abroad and bought countless amounts of souvenirs everywhere I went. In fact, one time in Thailand, I bought so many souvenirs that I didn't have enough money to eat at the airport, so I borrowed money from my friend. Just like that, I satisfied my desires by buying things I wanted. I guess it was a sense of self-contentment. And now, because of all of that, my room is a mess. Wow, can you see that? So many stuffed animals, so many items on the desk. Wow, it's piled up. Everything I said in the beginning just fits here perfectly. So I bought enormous amounts of things either outside or in Japan just because I wanted them. But was I really happy shopping? If I could ask that question to myself like eight or nine years ago, then I'm sure I'd say, yeah, I'm totally happy. Shopping's great. I love to shop. But now that I ask myself, I guess not. Sure, buying things will make you happy with joy and satisfaction. But as a result, what all of that impulsive buying left me is a dirty, out of control room, like my room. Then if happiness can't be bought, then what is happiness? Am I living a happy life? Like I know this sounds too philosophical for a teenager to say, but I've been asking this question to myself for a really long time. And I've realized that happiness depends on which of the two satisfactions you follow. Material satisfaction or mental satisfaction. The one I've been following for the past decade is material satisfaction, where I buy things just because I want them. But since that led you to a portal of chaos, aka my room, then why not spend money on something else that will bring you joy without things overflowing in your room? It's easy, almost too simple. Spend your money on the most priceless things that you could ever have. The quality time you spend with your friends, memories you make, new experiences, everything. Don't spend your money on things that will only bring you short-term happiness. Instead, enjoy yourself with the things that will bring you a sense of satisfaction, contentment, and happiness through the process and the outcome. And of course, it doesn't need to be only about events you have with your friends. See, so here's another example. Self-investment. Self-investment has a variety of things starting from learning new languages to enhancing yourself with the latest beauty treatment. Also, here's the best part. It doesn't need to be costly too because a simple book to read is also an investment in yourself. 
all of these priceless activities will lead to self-satisfaction. A feeling of fulfillment that comes within your activities or your memories. And look, don't worry. It's not difficult at all. In fact, I've been doing it too. I've been reading books that are in my interest or will be useful for my future. I've also been experiencing new activities. And I've been engaging myself in picture book translation activities to help improve the literacy rate of those in developing countries. Now, guess what that brings me? It satisfies me because I'm doing something that will not only improve myself, but also the world. Now, for those who are wondering, look, Mariko, I want to do self-investment and bring myself inner satisfaction, but my room is overflowing with things and I don't know where to start. Maybe that idea fits some of you in the audience here today. <laughs> don't lie. Well, don't worry, here are some tips. So first, carefully select the products before purchasing them in the first place. Like I know it may be too late to say this, but just keep this in mind the next time you purchase something, okay? Okay, so think carefully. And if you're still debating on buying it, then ask yourself this question. Hmm, is this really necessary for me to buy for $30? Now, for those already with a messy room, welcome to my world. Just make up your mind and get rid of everything that no longer sparks joy to you. That's an idea from Maria Kondo, a renowned tidying expert from Japan, also known for her Komari method. She expresses that you should keep only the items that spark your heart and discard things that don't. Now, she's not really trying to advocate minimalism here. Instead, she supports living among the items you truly cherish. Now, that's pretty achievable, right? And of course, you don't need to get rid of everything. You can, there's some other ways to keep your memories and then still discard them away. So, for instance, why not hold a flea market? That way you can save your memories by having others keep them and also get some pocket money as well. Maybe it's better than just throwing it away, for sure. What's more, under these difficult circumstances, utilize online marketplaces like eBay or Mercari or Yelfu auctions. If the things even not worry are closed, stop by Uniqlo and join in the Power of Clothing project and donate your clothes to those who really need it around the world. Like I know how hard it can be because I too have a lot of items in my room that remind me of happy, joyful memories. But it turns out you only use a few items in your room, even though you own like a gazillion items like I do. In fact, I did a little research on my own and kept track of what I wore each day during my spring vacation for two weeks. And here are the results. Wow, so many striped shirts, huh? <laughs> Guess I really like those. Oh, by the way, this is completely based on my unconsciousness, which means that I'm choosing the same ones over and over again without actually realizing I do. Now, how about you? Are you really using every single item you own in your room? I don't think so. And I just proved that. <laughs> so be brave, say goodbye to some of your things. And this, after all the things I went through, this is the result. Of my new room. New and improved. The desks are so neat. Wow, I think I did a pretty good job, didn't I? <laughs> so keep in mind that whatever you find unnecessary may just be the ones that others have been looking for desperately. And after you've done all of that, you will have a sense of self satisfaction. Jose Mujica, he's the former president of Uruguay, also known as the world's poorest president, gave a speech at the 2012 United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development. And in his message, he said, 
A poor person is not necessarily someone who has little, but one who needs infinitely more and more and more. I wonder how many of us are poor in this audience right now. If you can't stop buying, then that just means you're being controlled. Controlled by the impulse, by the environment which we live in, known as mass consumption society. I have to say it's almost as if it's a curse. And I feel that way very strongly. We all know what mass consumption and mass production induced, right? Our environment is corrupting. Excessive amounts of foods are going down the drain. And 3,000 liters of water is used to make one t-shirt out of countless fast fashion items. Do you really want to repeat this devastating situation all over? Like, I know I've only been talking about how to clean your room or why my room is messy, but I know that my idea applies to everything that we own or purchase. With the appropriate amount of items we own, we can save not only yourselves, but your peers and the world for a better, sustainable future. So I ask you this question again. Do you really want to repeat the situation? Thank you very much.